I'll try not to take up too much of your time as I know we're closing to an end already, but as many of you know, I'm a terrible singer. <laughs> just kidding, I'm just kidding, sorry. <laughs> um, but really, I'm really lucky to have been born with a God-given talent as much as my mom wishes it came from her. Um, just kidding. <laughs> Um, and since I was little, I've really loved singing with people and for people. Um, however, a lot of that talent that I, I'm lucky to have wouldn't be possible without the community that I'm standing in front of right now. Um, imagine, I know that uh, if Jan Morgan was here, she would easily imagine the little girl. I know that Jane Merch can. I know lots of you here can imagine me, but a little girl with either a Cinderella dress or a pink purse coming in and walking to church on Sunday morning, and it's her first day of cherubs. And cherubs was like the little little kid choir um and now obviously that was me and <laughs> what i experienced was nothing really short of enriching um i'd walk up the steepest stairs i've ever trekked into the upstairs choir room at the uh, top floor of the historic building and i found a place that laid a foundation um, for the person i am today cynthia mcgladry had us playing instruments singing genuinely enjoying our time together banging drums and boom whackers i don't know if you guys have ever seen the boom whackers or big tubes that do the whole scale um so fun and um we were just learning through play um learning music and ministry of course through play and what was better was that i got to sing for my family and the people who cared about me i got to perform in in a fun way for church um, but clearly that little girl wasn't little for long um now imagine a middle schooler seventh grade terrified of the world just learning about skinny jeans and high top converse my mom finally let me buy a tube of mascara and uh well just so i may have fit in fashionably at school but um where was i supposed to fit in at church right i had just i wasn't really a part of the children's choir anymore i didn't know you know where i quite fit in i didn't want to be with the little kids anymore we had just lost the praise band director at micah and i just wasn't little anymore and then that's when Jenny Pitney came to church. And uh, now before I say anything else, Aaron, no pressure. Um, <laughs> just kidding. But I, uh, I, heard that we have an, I heard that we had a new praise band director and a new person to help lead our ministries at Micah and take on one of the most important roles around here. I heard she came from a friend's church in Portland and how, wonderf how wonderful she was. And little did I know that wonderful would be an understatement, really. After settling in at church, Jenny quite literally banded together one of the greatest bands of our time. <laughs> Life song. <laughs> uh, I, this awkward little middle schooler with all of the troubles of the world on my shoulder, was invited to be a part of a band. A band. A band. And I, I knew immediately it was kind of, there was an option. Like, what well, if you were going to be a part of this band, what would you want to do? I'm like, I'm going to sing. So on February 13th, 2011, Jillian Berry, Maddie Hickerson, Allison DeLude, Jake Riggs, Justin Haynes, and I all stood before the congregation in the historic building in the sanctuary. And this was the debut. And this is, now I know this because it was on video, but Carrie Burtis, our music ministries director for the traditional service at the time, had literally said it was the world premiere of the youth band. <laughs> and boy, was it. <laughs> I watched the video recently of this performance. Um, <clears throat> and Jenny had her guitar in hand over to this side. We were all terrified. We needed her there on stage with us. Justin and Jake were comfortably at their instruments. And uh, us three gals were shaking in our boots, minus maybe Jillian a little bit. She was the most confident of us all at the, at the time. <laughs> and um, we were ready to sing our little hearts out at the microphones. Um, I'll still never forget how scared I was. I, I didn't want to sing harmony during the, the first performance of the youth band because I'd screw it up. I knew it. Um, Jillian took the lead vocals and I was fully prepared to sing my one line. And I did. And it's like one of those awakening moments where you're like, this is terrifying, but I want to do it again. It's like a roller coaster. Um, or like when you know that you're good at something, but you just don't know how to share it yet, I'd figured out another way to share it. So Jenny, with the support of the church, of course, gave us this beautiful opportunity. Now, obviously, the band didn't stop there in terms of people. You know, Fleetwood Mac didn't tell Stevie Nicks there was no room at the inn. Uh, so, no, we're adding more members to the family. Jenny actually found more kids that had this same passion to somehow share a bit of the music without feeling like it was something we were forced to do by our parents. Um, Carrie's daughter, Ariana Burtis, joined us as another vocalist. Seth DeBlaze killed it on the bass and still does, as well as Mac, De Mac Steckleman did and does on the drums. 
Later on, Stevie Trapero joined us on guitar and it was an explosion of talented people. Jenny would handpick songs for us and find ways to us for us to perform outside of the church. We were able to experience so many things together from performing at conferences to singing for fundraisers. At one point, Jenny had even encouraged me to play the piano, though I had stopped playing, uh, doing lessons for a while. So I learned to play a new way to play the piano. I can read guitar chords. And um, I was able, able to play piano for some of the worship songs, which was so exciting for me at the time. Um, and another time I was going through some really hard times with um, mental health, with OCD, and I had developed, oddly enough, this really bad fear of fainting. And um, at school, I, I had to worry about that. And at, I was worried about when performing with the choir, and you think people at church would care if I had a fear of fainting? No, nobody cared that I had a stool behind me during those years, and even in my darkest times, really, I felt comfortable and safe performing, and not even performing, just singing and worshiping for and with you guys. Um, this is the type of church that I want for my little friends out there because I know that there's a lot of those little girls with the pink purses and the and the dresses and there's little boys coming in with their with all their little toys too and, and their little outfits so it's not just us little girls that want to perform um, and I know that everyone here deserves to be a part of a ministry that they belong in and for some of you it might be one of the many classes and groups that we have here whether it be in person or on zoom um, for some of you, it might be music ministries. And I know that that's it for me. Uh, music is my role in the church. Um, I'm not going to lie. The people and the music are what really keep me here. Um, if there are two things I'd ask you to support in our church, it's the children and the music. Genuinely, that's coming from my heart. Um, I cannot emphasize that enough. Without your support in these, I would not be here right now. Um, our church has some, has, uh, some really incredible leaders really incredible. And that actually circles back to Aaron as I, I watch more and more people being a part of the music ministry since he's been here. Uh, we've been blessed with yet another talented leader. These people are laying the foundation for our future of the church. Our church finds really great people. We cannot let them go to waste. Keep these talented people and leaders in our congregation. Please support the music ministries of First United Methodist Church. Thank you.